Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Today I want to talk to you about record types. In C Sharp 9, Microsoft introduced the record type, and I think a lot of people, including myself, were confused about where these should actually be used. Is it something new? Is it a class? Is it just doing something small? I really wanted to dig in and show you how it works. Let's get started. So I'm just starting with a really quick console app. Does nothing so far, right? Just writes a starting and then it goes about its business. And I'm gonna create a class here. I'm gonna call product. We've all done this a hundred times. So say prop, let's give it an ID. I'll do the same here for name and prop decimal for price. And finally another string, but this time it could be nullable. I'm gonna call description, all right? We've all done this a bunch of times. And this element being non-nullable means we probably would need a constructor to initialize it, or we could initialize it to an empty string if we want. I'm actually gonna use a new keyword in actually C Sharp 11 called required. I think it's C Sharp 11, it might be 10. And in this way, we can create a new product. And as long as we assign the name to tomato, let's say, Price equals 2.99. Let's make it a decimal and let's put a semicolon after it. This will all work because this is saying that without having to have a constructor, I'm making sure that on object creation, that name is specified. If I get rid of this, you'll actually see a complaint about that required. I figured since I was using it, I should explain what I was doing. And now let's make a copy of this. Let's call it product two equals product, right? We're not creating a new instance of this. We're just copying the reference here. And if we were to say, write line product equals product two, what do you think would happen? Let's open up a console real quick and let's just run this, right? And it says that they are equal, right? And they're equal because it's actually testing against the actual object. These are the same object, and so it says it's equal. But what if we instead said new product with the same values, right? What happens then? Now, in terms of classes, this is correct, right? We could override the way that equals works or generate hash code to make sure that these two could be treated this way. How is this being treated? This idea of comparing them is different from the way that value types work. And value types, as long as the content of this is the same, it would be the same. So in fact, if we made this a struct and made it represent something like a value type, it might work. Instead, what if we just made this a record, right? What do you think would happen? I haven't changed really anything about this, but if I run it again, we'll see that it's true because by turning it into a record, we're telling it that we want the semantics of value types, that if all of these properties are the same, they should be equal. If we change this in the smallest way, it's gonna be false. Now, the way that this is actually done under the covers is interesting because what the compiler effectively does for records is it creates an override for equal, for hash code, and as well as to string. So let's go back here and explain the to string because this one's kind of interesting. If I would say uh, another right line, product to string, right? And remember, we're still with this as a class. All it's giving us is the data type. This would normally have the namespace under it as well. So if we had put namespace foo, and let's go ahead and using foo, not exactly what you would really do here, but to show you that within a namespace, you'll get the entire version of that product. But what happens if we come in here and make it a record? Isn't that interesting? So it's overriding to string in order to treat this as more of like a simple data structure. And one of the things that might not be obvious is that this can be super simplified. So if we take here and we say int ID string name decimal price, and string question mark description, and let's give that an actual null and get rid of these for the moment, right? This instantiation doesn't work anymore, but it means we could do 
And so creation would just use a constructor. And what's interesting about this is that what it actually generates from this syntax is actually an immutable version. Now, with these properties, this is mutable, right? Because we can set those values. But one of the more common themes around product is to make them immutable, and that's immutable by default. Because you could imagine us, in a more typical world, doing something like public product. And if we made all these lowercase, in fact, if we made just the required ones lowercase, right? Come with these back in. Then we could say name equals name, right? We could just do the typical thing that we would do with a class. And in fact, we could make these init so that suddenly this object is immutable, which is something you're often going to want. And in fact, our old version just implemented all of this as syntactical sugar underneath the covers. And so if we go back to this version, I'm actually going to get rid of all this because what you're going to see a lot of times is the definition of the record, right? I'll break it into multiple lines just so you can see what's going on. But if you don't have any logic, the record doesn't even need a body because you're just saying, this is the shape of the thing I want. I want to treat it as immutable, right? This comes a very quick way. Again, it's sort of a shortcut to writing these by hand because this implies all of that. Doesn't mean that records on their own are immutable, but if you use this pattern or you make sure that all properties are init only, it becomes immutable. So what happens if we come here and say product.price equals 199 because we're getting a discount, right? This doesn't work because this property is get and init. So in the world of immutability with records, how do we actually do this? We can define a new product because remember, in our case, it being immutable means we want to be able to create a new object with the change in it. And we could certainly just do this and that would give us a new object, but often that's not what you want. You wanna take the object and then safely mutate it to a new version of that object. And you could imagine using that in a bunch of different ways. And the shortcut here is actually to say, I want this product, but I wanna change it by saying my price is now 199M. This is a new version, it's not changing that, but this is going to include all the other data except for the things we wanna change using this with syntax, which is fairly new as well. And so creating safety in your mutability is sort of built into the way that records wanna work anyway. And so I find myself using records when I'm dealing with shapes that are about whether they're stored in data stores, whether they're stored in other sort of things like configuration files, or I don't expect it to be changed. And if it's changed, I wanna have a better way of doing that. You can imagine having this product from the database and making the change you need to make somewhere in your code, and then knowing that you need to then save this version. So this line, this product, becomes thread safe because there is no mutation happening. Only the mutation will happen here. And it's not even really mutation. It's making a copy of this object with some other values without having to know them all and do that sort of one-to-one -one mapping of each of the objects. So the last thing I want to talk about is we have our product here and let's create a new record here for retail product. And we can derive from product itself and here would we pass in any state that we want. This needs to match what we're doing up here. So we're gonna to have to bring in or default what we're doing. So int ID, string name, decimal price, to break these into individual lines so they're a little easier to see. String description, and let's say an integer for num in stock. And you notice it's complaining with these three because we already have them on the product, so we just need to pass them through. ID, name, price, and description, right? And so the idea of, I'll bring these in a little. The idea here of derivation works completely the same way because these are treated as different kinds of records and you're gonna apply them and they'll be immutable differently. Uh, and you can even have abstract records in there as well. So it gives you some control over these very small data-only objects, whereas classes imply that you're going to have some behavior to it. Though, to be fair, you can still have... Don't need the return there, of course. 
So you can have your own functions, events, whatever you want on this class. It can do operations, but in its purest form, you're going to talk about records as primarily being data only. So I hope you've learned something about how records are supposed to work. If I've missed something or screwed something up here, please down below the like button, go ahead and put it in the comments. Uh, do remember to like and subscribe as usual, as you know, from every YouTube video ever. It helps us a lot. And thanks for joining me today on Coding Shorts.